in this video we want to start talking about derivatives and we're going to start the discussion with something called the rate of change. So first let's consider this graph and make sure we understand how functions actually work. So we have a curve which we'll call f of x and if we plug in x equals to 1000 we see that that's going to be the value on the function that we get when x is 1000. We'll go across to the y-axis and in this case it tells us that, that f of 1000 is 35,000. So consider the following function which describes revenue in dollars from the sale of x car seats for infants. So this function is given by r of x which is equal to 60x minus 0.025 x squared and this function is valid when x is between 0 and 2400. So a question might be what is a change in revenue between the sale of 1,000 and 1,050 car seats? So the question is if I have a business and I'm making car seats I might want to know how much additional revenue is generated um, if I make 50 additional car seats after I've already made 1,000 of them. And so if we think about that that's R of 1,050 minus R of 1,000 because that's going to give me the revenue generated for 1,050 car seats and 1,000 car seats turns out to be $35,437.50 minus $35,000 and so the additional revenue generated is $437.50. So what if I had the same revenue function and I wanted to know what was the average rate of change between 1,000 and 1,050 car seats. So it's a bit of a different question, but now I'm trying to figure out what is that average rate of change. Namely, on average, every time I add an additional car seat between 1,000 and 1,050, how much additional revenue is generated? So we, are, we just have to recall that the average is summing up all of the items or the change that we just calculated and then dividing that by the number of items that are present, right? That's how you would average. So consider our um, difference there was $437.50. That was a change in revenue. And I was looking between 1,050 and 1,000 car seats, so I had 50 items. And so the average rate of change would be R of 1,050 minus R of 1,000. All of that divided by 1,050 minus 1,000, which is $437.50 divided by 50. Or, on average, I would add $8.75 of additional revenue when adding an additional car seat from 1,000 to 1,050. So if we look at this graphically, the green graph represents the function. And I have the function there in the top left-hand corner so we can just remember what it looked like. But I'm looking at this function now um, only for x values or number of car seats between 1,000 and 1,050. So it's just a snapshot of a very small piece of the function. Now that red line is actually the line that goes between the two points there. And, and we'll see in a few minutes how we can actually calculate that equation of a line, but it's running between the two points there, which on the left-hand side is the x value is 1,000 for the number of car seats and the y value is 35,000 for the revenue generated. And then up at the top there, when we get to 1,050 car seats, we know that we're generating $35,437.50 of revenue. So of course, if we have two points, we could clearly find the equation of that line, and that's how we got y there, that red line, is equal to 8.75x plus 26,250. One of the things you might notice immediately um, is that the $8.75 is present in that line, and that line hitting those two points is a secant line. Okay. So looking at the graph again, we see here that there's a distance h across the x-axis, and that distance h for our particular problem is 50, but it could be generalized. So if you think about a starting point at x equals a, and some ending point at x equals a plus h, then this is what the graph would look like. And so on the right hand side, the functional value up at the top would be f of a plus h. And on the left hand side, that functional value would be f of a. 
And so the difference in um, the Y values, in our particular case, the difference in revenue, but in general, the difference in the Y values would be F of A plus H minus F of A. And so if we put all of that together, we see that we can generalize our previous example um, by writing it as F of A plus H minus F of A over H. And this is what we know as the difference quotient. So our difference quotient now has a geometric representation, which is the slope of the secant line between the two points at A plus H and A. And it also represents the slope of the secant line, which is the average rate of change. 